Oh, hi guys, uh, it's me again. Um, a little bit of asked me about this um, ARX bike, which I've had for some years now. Um, I fitted an anti wheelie uh, set up on it because these bikes, I run mine on a three cell. Uh, when you run them on grass, or even with a supermoto set up on a three cell, they, they wheel like mad and they can go end over end and do a lot of damage to the bike. I've got Ali blocks in here, steering blocks which I made and I've also got uh, a really thick piano wire sort of uh, wheelie bar on the back here which helps to save it. But the bike itself, has, I've had it many years, it's very strong and I sort of think it's one of the best sort of off-road bikes you can get. But it always suffered with the this wheelie thing, you, you couldn't it's like an on and off switch. Um, I've got a four pole motor in there. I think it's only about 4,000 kV. But it's very hard, even when you put Expo and that on it, to get a nice smooth throttle uh, without, you know, sometimes going end over end. Uh, it breaks. I've had the shop pull out. I, when I had plastic bars in here, they used to break the blocks. Uh, used to bend the forks, you know. It can do a lot of damage with it, really. So I was thinking to myself, how can I sort of try and stop that sort of wheeling like that and have some kind of control over it? So I fly helicopters, um, which use gyros, what they did. I mean, now it's all fly barless, but uh, I've got a few gyros left. You know, some you can adjust on your transmitter, but they kind of, you can't have them in the right position. Uh, on the helicopter, they kind of sit flat and they go around that way to, to work the tail. Um, so... I was thinking I had some really old, when I first started flying, cheap um, GSW, I think they were, um, gyros, which kind of worked on a different way. They used to stand up that way and move around like that. Uh, so I wondered if I could put them in the bike in between the throttle and the receiver. So when the bike actually reared up, it would shut the throttle and then when it would come down again, it would kind of put the throttle back on. Uh, and I, I weren't sure if it was going to work, but um, it actually works really, really well. Um, and you can do like wheelies for, for, you know, like yards and yards without the fear of it going over because as soon as it comes up, it cuts the power. Then when it come, wants to come down again, it puts the power back on. So you can kind of keep a really nice wheelie going you know, for a long way. And it just, you know, on grass, these are, these tyres are so grippy that it wants to bang, you know, wants to go end over end. Um, so it's very controllable. Um, and I've had a lot of guys on different sites asking me how it works. So I'm going to give you a quick sort of demonstration of how things kind of work on it. Um, I've moved the gyro now to the top of the frame. I mean, if you can see it, look, this is the little gyro here. What was it? PGO3, oh yeah, I remember. GWS. Now, you've got a gain pot here. So the more you turn that gain up, the more it will, you know, won't want to lift the front up. You turn the gain down, and it'll want to wheelie. Now, if I can show you what happens... This is the, I'm going to rock the bike forwards. Maybe I should get my hand out of that spur gear. Um, I'll rock the bike forwards. And you can hear the motor going. All right. Now, I'm going to set the trim up on the motor until it starts to run. All right. On your fingers. But what I'm going to do now, the bike goes up. Can you hear the motor stop? So as soon as that detects a wheelie like that, it stops the motor. And then when it comes down again, put it back on again. So that's the power on. Puts the wheelie. Power goes off. Comes down slowly. Power goes back on again. And that's all through that little gyro. So, 
as you can see, that's how the anti-wheelie works. As soon as the bike starts to lift the front wheel, it'll cut the power and the front, as it comes down, it slightly puts the power back on again. So you can kind of float it along on the back wheel, really nice. It's kind of one of the best modifications you can do for this bike. Um, I did have the gyro, oops, I did have the gyro in there without the case, but I think it's better having it up that way because I was getting a bit of interference from the gyro from sideways movement like that, but now it's only got that way. You can see on the gyro, it's actually got sort of an arrow on there for where it's supposed to be mounted. So it is supposed to be in that plane, which is exactly right. I had it sort of round the other way in there, which was doing the same kind of job. But also when the bike rocked sideways, it was kind of trying to cut the power or put it on and it didn't drift so nice. So now it's just one way. That's all it does is that. So... Let me switch this off for a minute. This, the way you connect this up, it's really, really simple. You just run one wire from your ESC and it goes up, up here, and it goes into this side of the gyro. And then from the outside of the gyro, it goes underneath there and it goes into my receiver. So all it is, it's kind of, you think it's like in line with your speed controller motor wire. So you come out of the speedo, into the gyro, it comes out of the gyro, and it goes into your receiver. It's a very simple setup. Um, and like I say, you can alter the game through this game pot. You've got two pots here. These ones are to centre it. Um, on a helicopter, you sort of got a little screwdriver and you just centre it, but it's less critical on this bike. You put a little pot there and it's got a big green, so it's in the centre. But, you know, honestly, you can fit one of them in, just go in line with your ESC. I mean, I've got a Mamba Max Pro in there, you know, a mega uh, controller back in the day, and a four-pole motor on this. So I hope that explains kind of basically how it goes in. Um, it's a shame that ARX have gone out of business because I, I still think this is one of the best kind of strongest bikes you can get out there. I know there was a lot more come out, uh, but these are kind of all metal. I think the only plastic bit on it is the wheels, you know. Uh, um, you know these steering blocks were plastic originally, but I've made them out of alley myself. You could buy them, uh, but they're very expensive. And the thing with ARX was... If you wanted one bolt, you had to pay like £20 shipping, or, you know, and uh, or you could buy lots of bits of £20 shipping. It was a bit of a pain, you know, and whether that was part of them going under, I don't know. But when you went to all the spares, you had to kind of order a lot of stuff to justify you shipping on it. Um, now, when these first came out, they had a mechanical gyro in the back wheel because it's like a copy of a, a really early Ricky Carmichael bike, which I've got two of. Uh, and they're dead slow and, yeah, they're a bit lumbering and whatever. Uh, and there's not a lot you can do with them because the side frames on them are really sort of cheap alley. They're a toy, sort of a Radio Shack kind of toy. But ARX picked up on it and they kind of uh, refined it um, and they've come out, they come out with this bike. And it is a shame that they've gone to the wall um, because, you know... They've done a lot of little things with this bike. Over, you know, put like the electric the brushless gyro in the back of it, which works really well. Um, the mechanical one was horrendous. You know, it sapped so much power, uh, and it was very noisy. Uh, it was really, you know, a mechanical gyro, and it sounded like one. Um, they got really good suspension on the back. On the front wasn't so good. It's just got like uh, springs in there or whatever. But what I've done, I've managed to screw. You can see these blue uh, bits on the top here. What I've managed to do is um, I screw cut a thread on the inside of them, and I've got like big buggy shocks in there. So I've got oil dampers in there, and then the rod comes down and bolts onto the top of these. It's another really simple thing that ARX could have done. Um, it's it's really simple. It's just a, a like a I think I bought a cheap 
buggy uh, suspension, with shock absorbers uh, off Ebo. And I found that they fitted kind of in there really nice. Just put a thread in there, screwed them in there. Um, and you can adjust them, you can do what you like with them, change the old fitness. And uh, the suspension is absolutely like, you, it's, you know, it's beautiful. No bouncing, nothing. Um, so, and it works, you know, from the middle. You've kind of got a good, really lovely, soft, plush suspension with that. And I've not had to touch it. Went before, without the anti-wheelie, these forks are not very strong. You can bend them. And, I, you know, I was forever last in straightening forks out and stuff like that. And that wasn't because, you know, it wasn't strong. But you've got a heavy bike here. And when it came down on the front, you know, there's a lot of leverage there. And it would bend the forks from here. But since I put the anti-wheelie on, I've not had any trouble whatsoever. Um, I mean, ARX could have done that. I, I, you know, I don't know why they didn't. It's such an easy thing. I think... I mean, I've never had any other off-road bike apart from the uh, Ricky Carmichael when my little um, Coyo show in the background there. So I don't know how, you know, how good the other bikes are, but I know there was a lot of plastic on them. I think the, the Venom do one, uh, I forget, uh, I've forgotten all the others now, but they were big in their time and they sort of came out for a couple of years and they kind of disappeared again. Um, and I think a lot of them had a lot of plastic on them. Um, didn't really have a scale rider on them. When you put the rider on this bike, it looks really does look scale. You know, it's a, a really good size. A lot of these bikes, I mean, this is a quarter scale, but a lot of these bikes have like a the big bike and have like a little tiny rider perched on top. And they might have all the uh, decals on them and all that, but they just don't look the right size. This, when it's running, looks great, you know. And the rider's made of like a polythene. Um, I'll get my stuff now from um, uh, Gregor at Motor Rad Shop. A uh, CX rider, they, they sort of got a clone of one of these. Um, so you can still get parts for them, but for how long, I don't know. But a good thing with this bike, a lot of the parts are metal, so you can even make them yourself, uh, or maybe get them manufactured. I mean, I did break uh, the, the gyro packed up, the other week because I had it in a different setting and it pulled this uh, insulating block out of here where the rear shock goes so I've got um, a new one off of Greg super quick and um, you know he's, he's a great great bloke to uh, get bits off for you all your bikes because the clone I don't know if the quality is as good as the ARX you know but some parts are better I mean this rear tyre this rear tyre is a CX rider climb tyre and it's, it works really really well whereas I had the ARX one which I think was was it Medial Pro or I can't remember who makes them now what's it got is it on the front no ARX Racing oh hang on yeah oh GRP now ARX that's the tyres made by GRP and they were like really grippy but they fell to bits all the nobbles used to used to like break off them uh, and so you'd have a new tyre and, you know, after like a month or so, it'd just be like a slick because all these would just pull off. Whereas I've had this on here some time now and I've had not any problems. And I use it every week and the tyre's been perfect because it's a real pain. When you, you know, these tyres, this is another sort of issue really that should have been looked at. These tyres, you have to glue them onto the rim. So you've got the brushless gyro in there and the tyre... It's got a tiny little bit of foam that goes around the inside of that. And you have to glue the tyre on. Now, this truck, these two wheel halves, they screw together under here. So they screw together under here. So if you want to get that tyre off to look inside the wheel, you have to kind of cut the tyre off, which sort of like makes it useless, really. Unless you can be really lucky and careful and get it off. But I think once or twice I've managed to get it off, you know. I mean, really, it needs to come off now because the gyro bearings are getting a bit loud. But um, I'm not going to sort of try and get it off until it actually stops because uh, it is a, a pain to work on. Now, why they couldn't have made a beadlock tyre? I mean, some people say to me, oh, why don't you just tack it on here and there? But if you're running a three-cell battery, it'll just fly off. You know, it'll just come straight off. Um, so you've got to glue them all the way around. 
you're muscular all the way around, I say, come off. So before you kind of, what I do, if I get a new tyre, before I put it, I sort of service the gyro like 100% right through it before I actually glue the thing on, you know, glue the tyre on. Um, I think this front wheel could be uh, a CX rider, front tyre, uh, front wheel. I think I broke one of them a little while ago and I got one off Greg. So, you know, apart from that, this, I'm sure this is one of the strongest bikes out there and one of the best looking bikes, I think. I know it hasn't got all the engine decals on and stuff like that. For a basic on-road uh, on road or off-road, I've got two gyros. I've got one with the um, the drift set up in it. So I've got Supermoto gyro and tyre and the small front uh, Supermoto tyre, which I can use if I'm going to take it over the tarmac. Um I think really this bike is designed for off-road and it's, it's just as much fun off-road. I think maybe the steering could have um, been improved a little bit because it's quite an old-fashioned setup here with the, rock, the sort of rockers on the top here. Um, I think if you made it uh, like direct steering like most of the modern bikes, I mean, to be fair, ARX did make a setup with, uh, you know, uh, direct steer. But I think, you know, with an off-road bike... Because uh, you've got bumps and stuff like that, this is more of a solid kind of. Um, how can I put it? It don't you don't get that kind of like tank slapping like you do when you get kind of um, a direct steer. A lot of people have steering dampers in the setup and stuff like that to try and get because the wheel is so free and it has to be so free to steer that it actually you get like tank slappers wobbling from side to side. That's not so bad on a, a road bike, but when you got it on an RC off road bike. It is that the bumps can play havoc with it. So I've not kind of tried to look into um, doing a direct steer. It'd be quite easy to do, but it kind of works well as it is. I mean, it'll go along at walking pace and almost you can almost do like trails riding with it over some really bumpy stuff. And because it's got such nice plush suspension now, uh, I get a lot of fun out of just watching the suspension, the way it moves, you know, over the bumps and things like that. And you can do it so slow. But as soon as you punch that throttle, it, it's off. I mean, I don't know what speed it's going, but it goes from one side of our football pitch to the other side of our flying field, uh, you know, within seconds. It's just gone. It is a really fast. Um, like I say, I think it's a four-pole motor. I think it's 4,000 kV, running a three-cell, 300 milliamp, and I've got a little uh, 1,800 milliamp two-cell in there for the gyro. Um now, I, was, I have been thinking, I mean, I have seen other guys who have actually done away with a gyro in the back wheel and they put, like, weights in the tyres and things like that, which probably do, you know, it probably will run if you had a direct steer. Um, I don't think the direct steer would sort of work with the gyro running because I think it would be hard to overcome. This gyro has got so much sort of power, it's really hard to sort of twist the bike in your hand. But that's what gives it nice, uh, slow handling you know i do like to have the slow handling on the bike it's really impressive and when it's running you can't hear that gyro you know you only hear it when you first fire it up but you don't hear that gyro it's not like the mechanical ones which sort of like really raw the electric gyro in the back wheel is really kind of quiet and smooth and you know you can just get this to sort of go along at walking pace and it'll balance absolutely perfect and you can turn it and, and i love all that because i like watching the suspension run but then you can blast away front wheel sort of like inch off the ground or whatever and i think i've refined this model to kind of like how hey rx should have got it in the first place um i've not driven say any other bikes but you know this is tough this is all alley i made a little alley block in here so this wheelie bar slides in and it never bends you know once you've got a bit of piano wire in there and that saves your body work it's sort of going, going on with the bodywork. Now, when when ARX first made their first bike, and I've got one off of them, this bodywork was really thick. It was absolutely solid. And it lasted me, like, years, you know. Um, it, it, they used to snap across here, because if you didn't have a wheelie bar, that would be the first thing to go. But once you've got a wheelie bar on there, you don't have any problems. But over the years, I, I ordered new body shells, and they were like paper, they were so thin, um, 
they were hopeless. They would, they wouldn't even last you like a couple of runs about cracking and breaking. And I, I kept getting on to them and saying like, why have you changed the body shells? Uh, and they just said, oh, we've got a new supplier. Well, why couldn't you have made them the same thickness? Because they just broke. And they're quite expensive. They were back in the day, quite expensive to buy the body shells. So what I did, I got the original thick body shell there and I shoe goo a new one on top of it. And I've had this one now forever, for years and years and years. There's not a crack on it, a break on it. Um, you put it on, you forget about it because it's like, it's so thick now. It's double thickness, the original one and the... Uh, the new one on top because the new ones they are like paper and I don't know why they went down that road because they were expensive and you know you want to pay like 40 quid plus 20 pounds shipping you put it on your bike one crash and it's it's broken so that wasn't good either the same with the mud guard I've doubled up on the mud guard and every all the plastics so that's kind of I know I'm going a bit off tangent with the gyro but that is kind of like where we We've got with this bike. Now I haven't driven the uh, the clone, but I would imagine it's the same as that. Um, I've not had any sort of bad reports about them. I don't know if the alley. I mean, this alley here is really strong. It's a proper Durrell alley, um, and I've had no problem with the frame. The batteries fitting good. You know, it's an all round a proper a good bike. Now going back to my little Kyosho. I have found that you know I've got a like I've got a remake an alloy ring for this one. So I found out that the Anderson front tire is the same, almost the same diameter as that. So I'm gonna buy an Anderson front tire and see if it's gonna fit on them. Then I'm gonna try and repair this one and see what I can do with that. But I'm waiting for the Addy Cut to come to make some new wheels for the little Kyoto show. So guys, I hope that kind of explains how the gyro works. It's a simple, simple thing that can save you a lot of money and it looks fantastic when you can float along on the back wheel forever and ever. Um, one of my favourite toys, um, it, you know, I used it, when I first got it, I used it and used it a lot and then it's kind of sat on the shelf but I've gone back over to my flying field Got the anti wheelie on it. Uh, the super motad looks really good with the, the wheelie on it. I can almost wheelie it the length of the road where I go and run it. So, you know, and a shop mod is not that hard to do. Um, I don't worry about a front brake. I think it's more to go wrong. Uh, the rear brake is like good enough for what you want and you can sort of slide it around. So if you want to do this mod, if you can find that gyro, that they were like dirt cheap, those gyros. And there must be still a few around GWS PGO3. And, you know, they will transform the handling of the bike. You won't get them snapovers and braking stuff. And it makes the bike really more controllable. So um, I'm going to sign out now, guys. I uh, hope you like the video. Subscribe or whatever you want to do. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.